unto God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, good evening and welcome to the January 22nd, 2019 Board of Selectmen's meeting. On the agenda, we have public service announcements. We have James Waddick to tell us about the Community Food Collaborative. At 6.35, we have a public hearing for tree harvesting. At 7 o'clock, we have a vote on dementia-friendly community training. 7.15, we have a joint meeting with the Planning Board to discuss Route 15 corridor zoning development strategies and vote to authorize the chair to sign Green Communities grant application. Department head updates, building department, police department, town administrators update, old business, new business, correspondence, approval of minutes, citizens forum, and then there is an executive session. Okay, Priscilla, any service announcements? No. Mike? No. Mary? No. I just have a couple. This one is from the Recreation Department. It's a day trip to Mount Snow, February 2nd, which is a Saturday. Cost is $100 per person. It includes lift ticket and transportation. Buses depart 7 a.m. from Burgess parking lot. Arrive 9 a.m. at Mount Snow. Lift tickets will be distributed upon arrival. Depart from Sundance Space Lodge at 4 p.m. and return to Sturbridge. For reservations, contact the Sturbridge Recreation Department. We also have a press release from Finance Department. The Town of Sturbridge is now accepting applications for the Town of Sturbridge Tax Assistance for Low Income Senior and Disabled Citizens Program. If you would like assistance in paying your real estate tax bill and you are 65 years or older or have a state recognized disability and your total gross household income does not exceed $20,000 if single or $30,000 if married or if others reside in the household, you may be eligible. Applications are available at the Sturbridge Town Hall in the Finance Department at the Sturbridge Senior Center online at www.town.sturbridge.ma.us. The deadline to file an application is February 15th, 2019. Okay, it's not quite 6.35. Now, um, Heather is not going to be here, but she did want a vote taken on the dementia training. training. So does anybody have any questions on that? The only, the only additional bit of information is that she's been trained to be able to, to give To be a trainer. Courses, but she also learned just uh, this week, I believe, or last week, um, that we, you can also, employees can also do it online, <laughs> which makes it more convenient if they wish to do that. So it's, uh, it's worthwhile. You know, I, it was a workshop, one of the workshops I, I went to to talk about this program too. And um, so I'd, I would recommend the board support it. Okay, any questions from the board? This, yeah, this requ would require all town employees take, including the board of selectmen, uh, and well, to take uh, training. I don't know if it would require absolutely. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know employees, but not yeah. you know, I think it's still. But it's our policy. It's, it's, right, it's our policy. The town, it's town policy. A, yeah, friendly. Right. And, and, and all, and all, I would assume all boards and committees would have the same opportunity to go online and take mm -hmm. the. Yeah. yeah. Is there a cost associated with us going online? I don't no. believe so. No. no. No, it's free, and I'm sure there will be additional uh, classes if people want to take. Right. That's, take, that's correct. Um, uh, but but the, the yeah, it's to become no, a one with, yeah one, it, part of the uh, the uh, public information um, component of being a dem dementia friendly community. My understanding is that you know town employees uh, uh, sh should be encouraged. Yeah, I, I think encouraged is a, b a better word uh, to uh, to take the. Uh, the dementia friendly training and also uh, um, uh, related businesses in town we would we should encourage 
you know, yeah, restaurants. Yeah, I'm, sure, I'm sure Heather will be she, she approach has, them. Yeah. She's been doing that, too. And, and we've been doing that. But this, this is to uh, support <coughs> the, uh, the town's efforts in, in being a de dementia-friendly community. Okay, so then is there a motion then I'd, to... Yeah. Go ahead. I'd like to make a motion to support uh, the, uh, the, and encourage dementia-friendly training throughout the town of Sturbridge. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, four to one. Um, I'm sure all the other departments will get the uh, link. Was that Mary, 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 Mary second? Yes. yes. Mary. Mary. Okay, good, thanks. Okay, I unfortunately, I know, we have to, to I'm, I'm, I know. I'm much I was, slower. I was on <laughs> the clerk at two other things. Thank it's you. tough to take meeting minutes. Okay, then 6.35, we have a public hearing. Mary, do you want to read the notice, I will. please? In accordance with MASH General Laws Chapter 132, Section 40 through 46, the Board of Selectmen will hold a public hearing on Monday, January 22, 2019, at 6.35 p.m. on the petition of a logging permit for land at 192 Podunk Road, owned by Tim Moyna and Judith Moyna. This hearing will be held at Veterans Memorial Town Hall, Sturbridge Town Hall, 308 Main Street, Sturbridge, and the notice is dated January 10th, 2019. Okay, Scott, would you like to come down, please, and the Moynas also, if they wish, or half of them. <laughs> Okay, Scott, you just want to explain, please, what it is you're doing or want to do? Sure. Um, we're doing a timber harvest on the Moyner property. Uh, a little unfortunate because it's in response to gypsy moth mortality. So, yeah. As you know, we've done quite a few harvests on the property, but this time it's um, a salvage operation. Mm. Mm -hmm. But you know, it needs to be done. Right. Yeah. Yeah, no, the towns. Now than wait till it's. Yeah. You know, a hazard and falling on people's heads. Or yeah, the town's spending a lot of money too on trees. Mm -hmm. for that it's going to be a problem that I think gets worse instead of better. Yeah, very same reason. Does anyone on the board have any questions? Um, yeah, yeah, well, uh, we, we did get some, some correspondence. Yeah, we do. We um, had gotten one from the Division of Fisheries and Wildlife, and the division does not expect activities proposed in the plan to negatively impact estimated habitat. Okay, we do have a copy of the cutting plan certificate. We also have a memo from the Department of Public Works. Um, no major concerns about the landing location and a recommendation of the $5,000 bond, which the board always puts on mm -hmm. logging permits. Then we also have a note from the Conservation Commission, and I think there might be a typo in this. They have 198 Podunk, but it's 192. That's my address, yes. Yeah, okay. I think the property's address is 198, is it? Um, well, the cutting certificate says 192, yeah, so. Okay, um, there was a little discrepancy. I, it's straightened out though. When um, the CONCOM agent looked at it, she said the property boundaries differentiated from the tax parcels shown by Mass GIS. It appeared that a portion of the harvest would be located on 236 Walker Road, which is owned by the town of Sturbridge, as in, in, as, and is in the care and custody of the Conservation Commission. I contacted the town assessor and she reviewed her records. Historic records were retrieved showing that the property boundaries shown on the cutting plan are accurate. The current assessor's map and mass GIS records are inaccurate and will be updated to reflect the correct boundaries. Okay. Um, I guess she also spoke to you, Scott. Yes, yep. About, you know, providing to implement though, okay. Um, the service forester requested corduroy to be added here only if rutting occurred. The SCC respectfully requests that the board 
of selectmen condition their approval to include that corduroy be added at this crossing, SC-1, and maintained throughout the duration of the project, it would be advisable to have the length of the corduroy extend approximately 20 feet on each side of the crossing. Do you have any problem with that? Uh, well, I, I think that what Chris put was more accurate because we did address the issue. It, it's an existing road, wood road, that goes from one field to the other. It's historically been used as an access, egress, ingress, um, and, it, and it's well fortified. It's a very hard road, and um, Chris had some concerns about that as well, and uh, he recommended that we, well, if the ground's frozen like it is now, if you put corduroy down, it's just going to roll around and it's not going to mm -hmm. do anything. He said that if conditions needed, merited putting corduroy, if it got soft, then we put it in. And that makes great sense because then it will kind of mush into the ground and it'll be stable. But if you put it on top of a frozen surface, which is what we hope to have when we do log it, then it's just going to move around. But I do not want to cause a situation that's going to cause us <laughs> not to get our permits. Well, no, but we could also, um, in the condition, mention that fact that only if needed, if, that would you know, be great. Yes. that way everybody's satisfied. Yep, I think that would be super. Any other questions or comments? Mary? I just have, a, um, I did receive a letter from an abutter in support, and I indicated that she wants me to, they would like me to read it, so I'm going to read it into the record. Uh, we received an abutters notice for this hearing. Tom and I would like to convey to the Sturbridge Board of Selectmen, Mr. Garish of Garish Forestland Management, and the Moyna family our support for the tree harvesting permit at 192 Ponick Road, Moyna property. We have been abutters to the Moynas since 1985, and their stewardship of their land has been consistently excellent. It is integral to maintaining the rural character of the Podunk Road area and a primary reason why we stayed in Sturbridge all these years, investing in our own Podunk Road property when we could have moved closer to our jobs. We hope the board will approve this permit and enable the Moynas to carry on their land management and stewardship for many more generations to come. Sincerely, Ann and Tom Geyer, 203 Podunk Road. Very nice. Um, did you uh, give Janae the green cards? I forgot to ask um, you earlier. Well, I, I, I gave, no, I can give them now. Yeah, like, please. Uh, you know they gave the guy or certainly yeah. received it. <laughs> I didn't get um, all returns yet, but I can give you well, the ones that I sent. Yeah, but it, it's, not, it's not necessary for all returns. It's the fact that yeah, you made the I attempt said. to notify yeah, everybody. Straight that you because if it was all return cards it could be one person out of spite or something wouldn't return it um can can we do that tomorrow sure okay. yeah um, right, right. and we'll have a our assistant come by we can yeah help you. that would be fine thank you okay any other comments or questions um yeah i'm unclear now whether uh uh we're going to have the condition recommended by the uh, conservation commission if writing occurs that's, well, that was the recommendation, actually. Yes, no, I, I said we could compromise and not demand that it have to be done, but it should be done if the ground changes from frozen to... It, yeah, if, if, if you get running conditions, yeah. we, will, we will install... Um, uh, but the, yeah. that's the way I read the memo, is that if rutting occurs, that, yeah. that the uh, corduroy will be put down, and they asked us to put that in, that in the permit. Yes, yes that's great. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that... It wasn't that it be put down if there's no rutting. No, the, yep, no, that would um, be perfect. Could and be added the other added thing they, only they if rutting occurred. The other thing they asked was that the uh, the conservation commission uh, be notified of any changes and also notified when a uh, harvester is selected. So that that you normally do that anyhow. Right. But. Well, yep. We don't know if the harvester is yet. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's, when the harvester that's is That's usually the case when selected. we get these permits. Our, our standard conditions include things like uh, like uh, coordinating with the uh, Yeah, the Scott's had enough, You've, you know, yeah. the hours so of operation. We don't have to by the conservation, so that's just, I talked to Rebecca. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yep. the usual, the 5,000 bond, the yep. hours of operation, notification of the buses, right. no holidays, no Sundays. Okay. The, um, uh, and the, do you still require that declaration of consent from the landowner? Um, it wouldn't hurt to have it. Mm -hmm. we did I, get think, it, I think it's part of the regulations. Package we so. got, yeah. It's good. Okay, anybody in the audience have a comment? Is there a motion to close the public hearing? So moved. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, now, is there a motion on the plan itself? So moved. Moved uh, to, move to approve it. To approve it. At, uh, with all with, the conditions. With all the conditions that we discussed here. Mm -hmm. oh, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, you're all set. Thank you. <laughs> very good. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have James Waddick. Is this okay here? Sure. Yeah. Sure, any, any one of the seven <coughs> seats. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I appreciate the opportunity to come and speak with you tonight, and uh, I'm okay. here to request. Jim, that mic might need to be a little bit closer. It's okay. It's not as tall as these. Okay. I'm Jim Waddick. I live at 78 Allen Road, and I'm here to talk to the board about uh, or request your continued support of the Community Food Collaborative. Just by way of background for anyone who may be watching that's not familiar, the, uh, the CFC is an all-volunteer organization formed through joint efforts of the Sturbridge and Southbridge Rotary Clubs. We have over 90 volunteers and have received tremendous support from Tantasco High School, from the administration, from the teachers, from the students, they've been terrific, and also from numerous local organizations and businesses. In 2018, the CFC delivered over 1,500 pounds of fresh produce to the St. John Paul Food Pantry, uh, which, as you know, supplies needed assistance to our neighbors both in Sturbridge and in Southbridge. Our garden is located on the Federated Church property adjacent to the rear town hall parking lot. The church has generously agreed to allow us this year to expand the garden by 3,000 additional square feet, which is going to more than double the previous space and put us up around almost close to 6,000 square feet. Our hope is that the output from the garden will at least double along with the area of the garden, but that's already underway. As I said earlier, I'm here to ask for your continued support by allowing us to again, in the upcoming growing season, use water from the town hall to irrigate the garden. Your support was critical to our success last year, and we will again, uh, we will be get, again, if, and will be again critical to our success if you approve. We're taking steps to be more efficient in our water usage, including installing a drip system for irrigation, and we're also going to include uh, rain barrels as many as five or six large barrels to collect the water and set up a gravity feed system. However, if Mother Nature doesn't cooperate, uh, we need a backup plan. And uh, having the water from the town hall to keep those barrels topped off when we don't get sufficient rain would be critical. Um, so that's the request. If uh, you allow us to use the water again, we'll be very grateful and we'll have another successful growing season and on behalf of the CFC, the food pantry, and the many neighbors, our many neighbors who will benefit, I thank you for your consideration and hope that you'll agree to support us once again. Okay, thank you, Jim. Any questions or comments? I just, a comment. I just think it's outstanding given the short duration of this program, the amount of people you're helping and the amount of volunteers you have. It's a big success and, thank you. you know, of course you have my support for water usage, it's the town's part in this collaborative effort. But when you were telling me the amount of people it's serving, I was very surprised. The kids from Tantas were fantastic. I mean, the carpentry department built all the beds for us. We supplied the materials. They built them. They installed them. And then the girls lacrosse team showed up on a Saturday and spread 25 or 30 yards of loam and filled the beds up. And it was just terrific. Yeah, and we had the day of caring with the United Way, and they came and helped us. Uh, hmm at the end of the season. So it's been a real community effort. And if I've had the opportunity to harvest and deliver the, the produce to the pantry, and if you mm. saw what I see when I bring it there, mm. and those people are unbelievable. 
yeah. the people at the yeah. pantry, the volunteerism is, that's yeah. a seven day a week mm -hmm. type of thing for some of those volunteers. It's really. Oh, there are good people out there. Really nice to yep. see that. Okay, does somebody want to make a motion to allow them to use the water? I make a motion that we allows the, allow the Community Food Collaborative to use town water as last year. I'll second that motion. Okay, any discussion? All in favor? Okay, four to nothing. Thank you, Jim. Thank you very much. Thanks, Jim. That's nice to see you twice in one day. <laughs> <laughs> see you Monday. Yeah. See you Monday. <laughs> yeah. Asking the land, I'll ask Lynn Gerard to put me on the payroll. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're along not on it. Along with the rest of us. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we will jump to department head updates until planning board arrives. So, Nelson, you're right on time. Mm. This is perfect. <laughs> Good move. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just for the audience, Nelson Burlingham, building inspector in town. Uh, my monthly report. Um, Broke it down, daily operations. Um, this month, uh, it looked like we issued 218 permits. Um, basically, we do the same thing we always do. Uh, there was 104 annual business permits, uh, what we call periodic safety inspections. They were done and processed. Uh, then I went to the next thing, specific commercial projects that's going on in town to keep you in uh, town informed through TV. Um, <clears throat> on Edwards Gas, uh, it's going slow, but there's a big hole, you know, in front of the building. But what's going to go there is a canopy. I was talking to Edward that owns it, and he was saying they're manufacturing a canopy now. And it's as soon as it gets done, they're going to ship it. And then when they ship it, you know, he, they're working on, they're hoping to get it up in the early spring. Um, they're also, they're putting a convenience store in there. Um, uh, we, when I say we, the building department, we haven't actually got the plans for it yet. But again, Edward was telling me there too, because I asked him, the architect, he's finishing up the drawings now. So we're waiting for him to get them to see what they look like. And then they're going to go to planning too. So that's what's happening with Edward's gas. <clears throat> and I know I've repeated this before, 40B project, again, that's still on hold. We haven't really heard anything. Um, uh, and then the next thing down, I've got Doggy Daycare, which is the old Hebit candy building. Uh, we did the sprinkle alarm and everything in it. She's hoping that this Thursday they open the first floor. And what they're going to do in the first floor is they're going to have uh, a dog care. They're going to have uh, 20 dogs for, for daycare. Not, they're not going to keep them overnight or anything. And this is just, we're trying to help her out so she can bring a little money in because she has invested a lot in that building. It's a big building. It's coming along. I mean, she still has more to do on the second floor. When she finishes the second floor, she'll have uh, 40 dog suites. And uh, she's hoping to have that done maybe in another three or four weeks. And uh, as far as the outside areas, they're pretty well set, you know, for the dogs to go outside. Of course, it's too cold right now, but they get the fences and everything up. So, um, you know, and then the basement, they, they haven't finished the basement, but they're going to. So what, what we did is we gave them permits and phases. So that, you know, they go up to the first floor, second floor, and in the basement. And that way, you know, the building gets done, and it's good for the town, and it's good for her. Mm -hmm. uh, Petro Gas, the old Roy Rogers, um, <clears throat> they're still at a standstill. Um, they have gave us, you know, um, drawings of what the building's supposed to look like and everything. But I, I don't know if they've heard from the DEP yet about the water, but I, I'm not really sure, but I haven't heard anything from them. I am supposed to meet this week with someone from there and they're going to talk about it, so I should have more information then. Uh, the marijuana medical facility, right now they got the HVAC done, the insulation inside's all done. They're going to start to, to put the, uh, <coughs> the sheet rock board, boarding it up in, and I was talking to them there the other day, and they're hoping to open uh, sometime in March, maybe mid, middle, end of March. Uh, Panera Bread, uh, they, they just finished insulating the ceiling. The inside walls, they have them all sheetrocked. And they're hoping to, end, uh, to open by the end of the month, you know, with the weather permitting. It has been cold, but they, they, they really feel they're going to open at the end of March, so hopefully that happens. Uh, Harrington Medical Office, which is that new building on 198 Charlton Road, they uh, 
Harrington Services, they're in there right now. We've signed the COC for them. They're using it for their patients. That probably takes about half of the uh, first floor. And then a uh, physical therapist just went in to the other side, to the back, but looking at the building to the right. And she probably takes up about a quarter of it. And then there's another quarter that they're hoping to rent to an insurance company. And then they have some other people interested in the second floor. So hopefully they get it rented out. It's a beautiful building. It looks really nice. It's, it's a compliment <coughs> to Sturbridge, I think. You know, coming in town, seeing it, it's pretty nice. Um, <clears throat> and I put uh, 127 Main Street, which is, which is uh, down here. Uh, they're just taking one... one uh, <clears throat> They're taking two suites and they're making it into one, and that's for a physical therapist. And that's because of the new building at 197. So sometimes when you see one building, it helps another building. You know, it opens it up for different stuff, and they get occupied. And then uh, Pine Lake Resort. <clears throat> uh, right now we have the all 10 building permits issued for there. And uh, of, the, of those 10, four of them are a uh, pretty good-sized building. They're conference centers. Um, they're hoping to open Memorial Day, worst case scenario, July 4th. Um, they've, 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 got, uh, they've also got a big pool that's gonna go in there. They've got it dug out, but they haven't did anything with that yet. But all the buildings are closed up, so all through the winter they can work on them, so they're hoping to, to get that done. And then nine, uh, Holland Road, the old mill. <clears throat> uh, there's been a lot of talks and um, uh, Douglas Rollins from Drew Management, he's hoping to, to close on and sign a uh, sales and purchase. And of course, everybody knows if he does, it's going to be a uh, retail uh, downstairs and a residential use upstairs. And uh, it'll actually be a brand new building from what I'm right. hearing. So he doesn't really own it yet. He just... No, he, Mary, he was, he, I thought he was going to own it actually last week. And uh, <clears throat> for whatever reason, it, well, I, I, I guess it's because they've got a... Um, with conservation, they, they, there's some things they got to do there, and they're working it out like right now, you know, business-wise. So yes, he doesn't own it yet, but I'm hoping soon. And uh, other than that, and then uh, Seven Main Street. Here's where we stand on that. Um, I've I've got all my letters. I've got one last letter I, I have ready to go out. Uh, I had talked to Ted. He allowed me to talk to Town Council. We're waiting to hear from Town Council right now as to. They're actually figuring out who owns the buildings, whether the bank has an interest in it, who he needs to send that last, who I need to send that last letter to. But once I do, and then I'm gonna, I want to pull the trigger on it. When I do, I will be back to you guys to see you because that contract, you you have to sign it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's part of our uh, protocol as far as financial part for the town. Mm -hmm. So uh, hopefully that'll be coming soon. And if I get answers from them, I'm hoping to get a date where. We can wrap it down if, if the bank doesn't do anything by then, you know. Um, that's about all I have to say. Okay, questions for Nelson? Yeah, um, <clears throat> I'm a little bit confused, and somebody actually asked me this question about when Pernero Bread is opening. At one point you said it at the end of the month, and then another, yeah. another point you said March. So is, okay. is, it, is it the end of January? Is it, February, I should have said. End, end of February, February, first Middle of March, of March somewhere around. Yeah, if I said it, okay. I said it wrong, like, I probably did. Because I didn't say February. Yeah, because I, right. I, had, I had thought that it would be about that time period, and the person asking the question thought it would be in January sometime. Well, they keep telling me uh, that once they, they do the fed up in there, Panera Bread, it's the same company. It does the same one all the time. Yeah. And uh, Harding did the building, but they're almost ready for the building that the people that do the fed up are ready to come in. When they come in, they yeah, just, that, it's like a McDonald's or any franchise. They do the same thing over and over and over. So, so once they quickly. hit there, it should go Quick. weeks, quickly. you know, yeah. hopefully. Yeah, once the building envelope's done, it goes quickly. Yes, yes. And, uh, of course, they've got that area to the left. Uh, they, they don't have it rented out yet, I don't believe. And uh, that's not finished, but it won't affect opening Panera Bread. Yeah. Uh, how um, there's there's also a building construction on Brookfield Road. I think it's 11 or something about about that number. How's that coming along? Karen's. Yeah, Karen. Yeah, they've got the they they're doing a rough frame. They're putting the roof up right now. Um, with the snow and everything, I I think it slowed them down some. They don't have it shingled or anything. They've got the trusses in the front up. I I believe that truss is that flat pot. 
-hmm. once they board the roof they've got some of it boarded they want to use that probably to stand on to put mm -hmm. the top trusses up so yeah. it's coming along you know? yeah it's it's good it was you know it's a nice it, looking it burned building. down and now we're going to have a, you know. a replacement uh, <laughs> uh, building that'll be new yeah when since they've you know it happened to a lot of people yeah. since they've started projects this year it's either rained or oh. now it's been cold and yeah. snow but i mean it rained a lot rain oh yeah rain, it was rain. everywhere but i mean they're all doing well it's just yeah it does well, delay things yeah yeah on, on brookfield road uh, as opposed to uh, seven uh, main street it's good that the owners took took it and rebuilt yes. right away yes no. it makes it look better for the town okay anything else for nelson no so everything's going good mm-hmm mm -hmm. very good okay Other than that, i think everybody over the club building has a cold i've got a bad one <laughs> don't breathe in here please <laughs> yeah really don't breathe <laughs> i've got a lot of sympathy for my chair nelson don't <laughs> breathe in here <laughs> no, wait till you get outside i can understand that though i really can <laughs> Oh. I know. Well, thank you for coming in, Nelson. Okay. Stay warm. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, not quite the full board yet, but uh, Chief Ford is here, so Chief, you're up. I was anticipating much else <laughs> later. Oh, well, so much <laughs> we're, oh, we're, we're moving we're, right along tonight. Hey, two days I hear it, so we're much huh. faster. <laughs> <laughs> Any questions? <laughs> no, have a good night. Okay. Good night. Thanks. 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 Stay warm. We're done. It's too cold out there. You can see that too, right? That's not good. Oh. I'll, I'll first start with November's report. As you can see, our operations and our training are pretty typical for this time of year. There's really not too much that stands out of there that's extraordinary. I don't know if you had any questions on any of that. Don't know why you're not doing boat patrols. <laughs> no, I saw that in there. It's, oh, no, it's good to keep it there. That way, you know. It's in the habit of. <laughs> I know. It, it better there than have to, <laughs> we had to reinsert We did have it. the same. We all had the same laugh when we, when we saw it. Yeah. Well, it was... the, um, I noticed a lot of incidences of protective custody for mental health problems. Um, Is that an unusual number? Um, you know, we're starting to see, I don't have true analytical data. Um, we're starting to see an uptick in... in, in mental health emergencies I think that um, I don't want to look at it as a, as a negative I think that it, I think it's more positive that that we have the capability to recognize those types of emergencies and that people are also recognizing them and allowing us and EMS to respond to them mm -hmm. so I think that that's why you're starting to see more of them because they're you know people are being trained to be more aware and, and with that awareness mm -hmm. um, we're able to get to people who are either in crisis or beginning a trend towards crisis so hopefully those numbers don't go up but if they do I, I see it not as a negative thing necessarily I see it as people getting the help that they need okay that's good anything else from the board on November um, December yeah. oh, I, Mike? I, well I've got a question that would reply to both uh, November and December is yeah um, and we were kind of chuckling about no boat patrols but this time of year brings ice uh, fishing yeah ice fishing and uh, uh, you know vehicles uh, mm -hmm. like uh, the like snowmobiles and that sort of thing that that are used in the winter time and do we do patrols or do we respond to just respond to calls if there's an you know, a complaint about a snowmobile, for example, or something, or do we actually patrol? Uh, well, we don't have a snowmobile to patrol on. Um, any any recreational vehicle violations 
we hope that people will report them to us promptly mm -hmm. and if they can possibly try to get any numbers off of the machine that's being operated in an unsafe manner we do have the capability of responding and reporting and taking ac actions when we see those types of, uh, of violations um, we also can partner up with the Massachusetts Environmental Police to assist us if we do have uh, continuous problems mm -hmm. in certain in certain areas uh, we did have a couple of uh, police responses on some of our lakes early in the season that were unsafe where young people were starting to brave themselves onto the onto, <coughs> the, onto the ice um, and fortunately we, and we were able to move some of the people off the ice and hopefully there's no other issues throughout throughout the year but to say that we have any specific or targeted enforcement actions that are going out there with respect to that not necessarily no that's mostly uh, mostly complaint generated mm -hmm. okay anything else do you have anything else Tom just uh, as we go as we do go through well it seems to be annual I, I just want to commend the officers and members of the Sturbridge Police Department the dispatchers alike that uh, participated in our toys dry our tour drives mm -hmm. our senior spaghetti dinner and all the other events that they participate in throughout the holiday months and I can't thank them enough for their commitment to our community their commitment to service and you understand when 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 everybody else is on vacation and enjoying those times it's our busiest time and that's when you know the men and women of our police department are out there working the hardest so i just want to commend them for that and for a, a wonderful 2018. so thank you for that okay thank you tom you know where to find us <laughs> i do great Get ready for budget time. <laughs> It'll be next weekend almost, isn't it? Yeah. Gosh. Thanks. Flies. Okay. Good, Good night. Travels. Thank you, too. Good, Good night. Stay warm. Okay. Next up on the agenda, we have a joint meeting with the planning board to discuss the Route 15 corridor zoning development strategies. We also have our town planner and our economic development coordinator. So... There might be enough chairs. If not, you can pull a couple forward, but there are mics set up. You will have to share the mics. Are all the members, are all the planning board members here? So I can just take a note. Yes. Yeah, all seven. Okay, thanks. Need one more chair. That's good. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Um, could you all please introduce yourselves for the record and for the audience at home, please? And you may have to share the mics. You just want our name? Well, yes. Just name. Charlie Blanchard, Planning Board. Jim Cuniff. Cross Chamberlain. Michael Chisholm. Chris Bouchard. Uh, Kevin Filchek. Jean Bouban, Town Planner. Okay. Where to begin, Jean? Oh. <laughs> Where to begin? <laughs> yes. Which study do you want to start at, Mary? <laughs> yeah, we'll okay. say yeah. um, so good evening. Thank you for meeting with us tonight to talk about Route 15. Over the years, there's been a lot of discussion and not necessarily a lot of uh, movement in one direction or another. I think the various studies that we've had from the master plan to the most recent DLTA that CMRPC prepared have said you're trying to be basically everything in this corridor and you need to narrow down your focus. So these studies have said right now we kind of allow a mixture of uses and we allow um, only within a PUBD. You can't really have these uses as a standalone other than commercial recreational. 
So the studies have said you should really kind of pick one direction and tailor your, your zoning to that desired outcome. So the paths that are there are kind of commercial recreational type activities is one category. Um, warehousing and um, light manufacturing is another category. And then hospital medical uses is the third category. So the latest study by Route, um, by Route 15, by CMRPC on the Route 15 corridor, we had actually asked for a market study. We were really hoping to get, I'd say, maybe a little more meat as to, you know, what uses were believed would thrive in this corridor. And we really didn't. We got a little bit of direction, and we, not minimizing what they did, they gave us a little bit of direction on that. They gave us some very minor zoning amendments that they would recommend that we make. And then they said, town, figure out what it is that you want to be and go in that direction. So Kevin and I have talked about this a little bit as well, and um, he can talk a little bit more about the market analysis. But for me, from a zoning standpoint, I would just like kind of a general direction from all of you, hopefully on the same page, as to what direction should we go with the zoning. I think once I have a direction, the amendments will be fairly simple to write. But with that kind of broad-ended or, or wide-open recommendations, I just feel we need to narrow it down. And since you are two of the major bodies that need to support this zoning, we thought it best to start together. And if I could just add, uh, you know, in terms of the market study, you know, again, as Jean said, going from manufacturing to recreation to medical are three hugely different areas that we can, uh, you know, try to develop Route 15. And from our perspective, you know, having that direction is going to be hugely key because then, you know, we can start talking to business owners and saying, look, this is a good area for p potential development or this isn't what we're looking for in this area. So w we really need uh, some, some kind of agreement so that we can move forward and, and as a staff we can, we can uh, develop, we can work towards making this, uh, 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 having a good plan for this area. Right. If, if I could, um, you know, Jane had prepared a, a brief memo for the planning board, and one of the things she mentioned in here, and I think it's very important, is she's bringing our attention to the really major investment that, uh, you know, the former Yogi Bear campground is having now. I mean, it's a, it's a major investment to upgrade that. And then you look right across the street where, you know, Hebert's Candy was and the Paws Plaza was going in, uh, the new dog daycare facility. Um, when you, you look at these different options, I mean, it seems to me at least that, you know, focused on the entertainment recreation um, probably fits in, you know, more directly to support, you know, those investments that were made down there rather than, say, warehousing. And, you know, the other thing that, as Jean was reviewing the history of what went on down there, I mean, at one point we came very close to having kind of a recreational facility with one of those inflatable buildings and some fields and so forth. So, uh, again, the economy didn't allow it to happen, but it kind of reinforces that maybe entertainment, um, uh, you know, recreation facility, at least in my view. So uh, just with that, I'll just open it up for more discussion. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't disagree with that. And um, the one thing, noticing the PU, the plan unit development thing, that definitely needs to be change the restrictions and because mm -hmm. nothing agree. that's never flown for i would agree and i might also depending on which direction we decide to go this evening it might even be wise to maybe even eliminate that and right. create something new that really helps achieve our goals right because i personally like the recreation entertainment a uh, warehousing in that we're talking bringing in trucks mm -hmm. Right. And there's the pinch point right. here. It's very difficult for the trucks to maneuver at this intersection. I think I've been here 13 years, and we've probably seen, well, maybe like 300 a year knockdowns of that light. Not right. to exaggerate, it's down again now. So. Right. But, I mean, we had the discussion, it, as a matter of fact, your last meeting about problems with traffic everywhere. And, you know, if we have recreation and entertainment, certainly that brings traffic. But it doesn't bring big trucks over smaller roads and small bridges and different things. And I do notice the consistent theme is the lack of water and sewer infrastructure. Right. And mm -hmm. the comments about town should invest in that. Right. Well, we have the studies that show that it's quite 
quite expensive, mm -hmm. really expensive. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mary? It's like everybody's on the same page tonight. Um, <laughs> I know those were the three, and personally, if I had to rate my preference, it would be the commercial, recreation, medical, two, and warehousing, three, for the same reasons that Charlie already indicated. And I also want to say that this area has kind of divided the community in the past in terms of what kind of development do we want it developed. And I just think that the fact that, I think it was 2010, that it almost got off the ground to have that um, sports complex. And that really did have community support. So I'm also thinking in terms of when we go to town meeting, I think residents would be more on board with that type of thing and consistent with the campground and, um, and that. And I would also, I mean, I know it's a lot of work for the planning board, but you know, at one point I really supported the plan unit business development. It looks great on paper, but nothing has happened. So it's almost like, I think you almost should go back to scratch and, and, and look at it all. Because I know I did attend the study, um, I don't know, seminar or whatever, findings, and kind of common sense things. There's too much land, there's too much of a setback, all these um, hindrances. So I would almost support you, you know, going, going back to the drawing board. But I, I like the, um, what's already been said about uh, commercial um, recreation. Um, we're a family-oriented town, and people are already coming to the village and I think that would only enhance their experience and make them stay longer. So that would have my vote. Mike? I mean, medical's oh. good too, I just yeah, wanna no. add this, but we also have the new um, medical that went in on 20. Right. Harrington's moved in, mm -hmm. physical therapy's moved in, so we're kind of addressing that end over there. So I, I think that it, it might be a little bit redundant, and I don't know if we'd have as much luck now that that building's been very successful, and it looks fabulous, by the way, so. Mike? Um, well, I think we're of one mind tonight because uh, I, I uh, strongly uh, would endorse entertainment and recreation type zoning. Uh, it's consistent with our, and particularly out, focusing on outdoor recreation, uh, consistent with our goals of eco-terrorism, uh, yeah, eco-tourism. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> 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 And the, the chief uh, just left my... You know, we, <laughs> we, uh, we, we uh, have hosted the Massachusetts Outdoor Expo the last few years. I hope we can uh, bring it back and, and, and make it larger than ever. And maybe moving it, part or part of it, or having events cons consistent with the Big Mo uh, in this area of town might encourage, um, you know, more development. Uh, one thing that the the twenty somethings and early thirty somethings are really into now is like rock cl climbing and walls. I mean, even young kids like um, you know elementary school kids love rock climbing. Uh, you know, six seven year olds up to well maybe seventy year olds. I don't know, but <laughs> but <clears throat> you know that's the, that kind of uh, recreation facilities is uh, focusing on. I mean, we've got a, a wonderful trail system that, uh, that we're working on. So, you know, and just focus on that as a goal for economic development on, and, and do zoning that would encourage uh, that goal. Um, we, we've had a, a gentleman that wants to move uh, bushcraft from Charlton to Sturbridge. Maybe that, that's another type of outdoor activity that, uh, that uh, would have primitive type of uh, of uh, skill training and uh, type of thing. What is bushcraft? Bushcraft is, uh, well, maybe, maybe Kevin could explain it as well as I could. The, the, sh the short version is it's a, and correct me if I'm wrong, it's more of like an outdoors survivalist oh. kind of uh, mm -hmm. experience. So, and it kind of go ties into that outdoor feeling that we're trying to build. Um, yeah. If I, I think I summed it up. Yeah, and I went to it in Charlton this past year, and it was, uh, I, I was surprised how many people attended and how, yeah. you know, what, how large an event it was. And it seems to be growing in popularity in the U.S. It's uh, very popular, like in U.K. and Australia and 
pla other places, and it's, I think it's growing in popularity, popularity in the U.S., particularly here in the Northeast. Uh, you know, so I guess my, my I, I've, I would like to focus on that and maybe not on the medical stuff or the, the other. It's, let's pick one thing to focus on. I think it's very consistent with our master plan. And uh, and I'd like I'd like the zoning to be consistent with that, and that supports uh, the new owners of what used to be Yogi Bear, supports other activities and existing activities in the area, and you know we'll have the Grand Trunk Trail run, running right up to there someday, and it, it seems like it makes sense. Priscilla, it all it all sounds good. Um, the the concept of the outdoor, as long as it brings money. <laughs> Um, to the town. That, that's the bottom line. I mean, that really is for all of us. Um, and the question arises is, what are the needs for water and sewer with any business you're going to bring in? And we come back to that proverbial wheel um, with the tie and bond study from 2010, the cost of it, who pays for it, and that whole bit. I think we have to find a resolution that it doesn't cripple us but allows us to move forward. Yeah, because it is a big issue. It's a big Always issue. Always has been, yeah. but... Yeah, it's a very big issue. Oh, Mr. Blanchard. Well, yeah, I just wanted to, on the uh, discussion on that uh, PUB dis district, you know, when we looked at that, you know, years ago for this, it was really patented around Bedford and Hanscom Field. And really, that area had so much more land. I mean, they, they easily have 10 times more land than this, you know, location did to try to get all those different uses in there. So I think that was one of the things that handicapped that. It was a great concept, but we had such limited acreage to try to put all those you know, uh, uses in there. It, it just never really flew. Uh, and again, as far as the water and sewer, certainly it's a cost, but I mean, any project that's going to be uh, successful, you know, should be able to bear, you know, the cost of getting water and sewer that they need. And, uh, you know, the report from Tiger Bond did indicate that uh, there is capability for on site disposal down there for so wastewater. And the other thing that was a hindrance before was we didn't have the capacity in the wastewater treatment plant, and now we do. I mean, we have expanded on that. So, uh, somebody who um, you know was able to run uh, the sewer down there, we at least have the capacity in the plant to take that sewage. So uh, I, I think there's you know uh, you know kind of a, a, a you know positive indication that you know we could you know, support that. And of course, in the past we've always had the developer pay the cost of water and sewer extension. So hopefully they would be able to do the same thing with a project that's feasible. Well, that seems to be um, the little struggle that um, even the report indicates maybe the town ought to pay for it, which. It's a lot of money, and it would affect all the ratepayers now. And nobody paid for my water or sewer, so it, it's tough. On that road too. Mm. You know, that's a sad part. It doesn't have the density. Yeah, for, to offset the cost. Right. right. Um, in the study, there were three different scenarios in the study. I believe I'd have to go and find the book, but it's an expensive proposition. But if we get the right zoning and we get the interest, you know. People would be, a good developer would be willing to foot it, mm -hmm. I hope. Okay, planning board people. <laughs> Comments, Heather? Um, I agree, I think that um, some things have changed in that area since the study was done. I mean, we have a solar array that went in that wasn't there before when we first did the study. Um, it's nice to see that the development has come along. I think once the Recreational park opens. I think we'll find that that's going to attract a lot, a lot of people, and I think they will be looking for the kind of things that we've discussed here tonight that would be something for them Edition. to do, something to do in the area. And I, our goal has always been that we can get people to stay a, an extra day in town. Always makes a big difference, and I think if we can attract some kind of um, opportunity for folks to participate in outdoor activities or other other indoor sports, which unfortunately uh, didn't come through before, but I think that's a great uh, direction for us to consider. I think it would help, certainly help you, right, Kevin? No, it absolutely would, and, and I think you, you said it perfectly. It's, it, what's that second thing in town? I and mean, we have the village, which is perfect, and it's a wonderful event, but uh, if you're going there, I think the average is about three hours. So what do you do with the rest of your time before you go back to your hotel, before you go and eat dinner? And uh, having some kind of outdoor recreational space in this area could be that second thing that keep people here an extra day or an extra you know, weekend. We don't know. I think it would be. It, it has the potential to really 
expand our uh, you know, the revenue stream that we get through hotel, through meals tax, uh, in our, in our uh, retailers, everywhere. No, and certainly with the um, campgrounds being renovated to upscale, absolutely. and those people will, they're not one day people, they come, they stay mm -hmm. a week, some people a oh, month, so we have them there, but the idea is to get other people to come and stay and spend money. Okay. Anyone else on the planning board? <coughs> Cause, uh, I can't add any more than what's already been said, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely, um, agree that the rec outdoor recreation or really or indoor <clears throat> recreation if there's an indoor facility which would work there as well i think the water and sewer is definitely an issue um and it d would depend on what that business could think they can generate and what kind of what needs they would require for water and sewer um so i think as a priority that makes the most sense um i do think there's a big opportunity for warehousing interesting enough having a retail background with consumer packaged goods amazon and everything else there's there could there could be a big revenue generation from that, but I, I don't necessarily think that should be a priority for our town, but definitely something to consider should, should the interest not be there for, for this, for what we're looking for currently, um, which would be down the lane, down the road where we could decide that later. But. Okay, anybody else? No, just a thought that, you know, on the entertainment and recreation, I mean, it would be, you know, uses that would certainly, uh, you know, support that as well, you know, restaurant, entertainment, things like that. It wouldn't just be, you know, totally recreation, but, um, you know, clearly, I, I think something that would support that type of activity for, you know, visitors and residents would be great. Mary? Sure. I don't know if this is off subject. I know that we're supposed to focus, and um, we're talking about recreation, but slash entertainment. I had a few people, um, friends, residents, approach me and say, you know, the Boston Pops go to Tanglewood. You know, why can't we have some type of, you know, we're a beautiful town, we have highway access, some type of outdoor entertainment um, facility where we could have concerts or maybe attract somebody's um, symphony orchestra that doesn't have any place to go in the summer. And I don't know if that's too different um, from recreation. I mean, they're both entertainment type of um, attractions. So I don't know if, if the zoning, I don't know how the rest, everybody feels about that, but when the idea was shared with me, I thought, you know, that would be nice. I mean, we have stage loft, but it would be nice if we um, were able to pursue something like that. And I don't know what kind of needs they'd have for, you know, well, services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, not just service. Yeah, but you'd also need a good piece of land. As a matter of fact, that idea had been promoted way back when, oh. up on the uh, shores of uh, Long Pond. Mm -hmm. It was okay. just an I idea. It was my yes. well. volunteerism, <laughs> I don't know. And I'm not saying, I'm oh, not, no. you know. No, I think outdoor concerts, <laughs> outdoor concerts are great. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't know. Wasn't there a jazz one on the common that mm -hmm. brought in a lot ago. of people? Yeah, mm -hmm. blues. Little tons of people. Blues, whatever. Blues, yeah. but, and our common is tiny. It really can't well, accommodate no, that it. type of thing. It's the right piece of land. Yeah. So are you going to say something? Um, in line with that, I've heard from people who said why, tying into the outdoor concert, but tying into the fact that it is New England and we have some wet summers, um, you know, about like a cultural spot that could bring, be limited maybe in size because of the land, you know, but people yeah. said if we could have something indoor and bring musical, bring some musical programs like this just because, and they did talk about the preference being outdoor, but because of where we are, it would, it would be a win-win so that you would bring them here and they didn't have to worry about if it rained today, oh, what happens to my ticket? Um, that kind of thing, and it would keep them here. You know, which kind of feeds into what Kevin said, you know, you go to the village, then what? And the outdoor is good if it's a nice day and you have children, it's a great thing to do. But if it's not a nice day, what are you gonna do? You know, so whether you have a cultural area or an indoor, some type of an indoor small arena that has games geared to younger folks, you can do something with them in the rain. You know, oh, and the snow. And the snow will be more year round also. Yes, mm -hmm. exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think that's the beauty of, of, of the indoor, you know, some kind of indoor facility or something like that, because it ties in so many things that the town's been trying to get, you know, whether it be fields that we haven't been able to pass or, or um, you know, just bringing something a little different. So I, I think that would be definitely be a 
uh, avenue to pursue. Yeah. You no, know, it sounds like we pretty much all have about the same ideas, and particularly with you know the planned unit development zoning there. And there were a few other places. Um, mm. The suggestion was to tighten up some yes. of the well, not to tighten up, but to loosen the restrictions and allow more things. And I thought you know some of them were pretty good ideas. I think uh, you know given the direction, we'll start to work on kind of a comprehensive rewrite of special use district and we'll look at the PUBD as far as potentially being eliminated or just writing a whole new um, overlay section for that and we'll bring our ideas back to you hopefully in the not too distant future. Um, Springtime. Yes, <laughs> when it's a little warmer. <laughs> it's coming so. quick. Ted's optimistic. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very um, quick question kind of for my own um, <coughs> education you know when you gave this great summary of uh, different studies that have been done over the years going back to 92 it, it suggests um, the report stated it is in the best interest of the town and the quarter to bring forth rezoning proposals on an individual basis employing contract zoning and I don't really know what that means because I know spot Lots zoning is not allowed right so so can you kind of define for me what contract zoning is so I don't believe you can do contract zoning anymore it okay, really is why. kind of um, spot zoning but okay back in the day I think actually your hometown savings bank over here was a contract zone and um, not sure about the I want to say Hampton Inn but I may have the wrong name but it was really when um, a developer or a landowner had a proposal to do something very specific on their land mm -hmm. that wasn't allowed in the town in exchange for kind of this contract that this is all we will do on this property could approve what was then called a contract zone and it had to go to town meeting and it had to be approved but it was for this very specific project so it, in my opinion it took away some kind some of the uncertainty you know, sometimes people are really nervous about rezoning for a specific thing because they say, well, you're proposing this today, but what if you don't do this? Then anything allowed in that zone can happen. So I think that was kind of the beauty of it, and I'm not sure where, why it fell out of favor or maybe it was deemed illegal. Well, but no, that's what, when I read that, I thought, that doesn't sit right legally right. with me because that sounds an awful lot like exactly. spots. Yeah. We don't do that any longer. Okay. Well, so. All right, thank you. Well, um, we we can do something similar though with pr uh, priority development sites right. where where the town all agrees that that this is a yeah. good use for a particular site, mm -hmm. and it and uh, and the nice thing about that we can do expedited permitting with that, right. which which developers love. I mean, right. Uh, and I mean, really, our um, the expedited permitting from the state is all permits within 180 days, and. We actually are. Um, we actually tracked all of this for some time when we were thinking of doing permitting software and when we were thinking about um, adopting priority development sites. Mm -hmm. And we found that for projects not requiring wetland approvals, start to finish was generally 45 days. Mm -hmm. For those requiring wetland approvals, it brought it up to sometimes closer to two and a half to three months. Excuse me, three months. So we still have a pretty good track record. But I know what you mean. If it says priority development, then developers really do like to see that. Yeah, and and it's kind of it it kind of replaces the old contract zoning type right. of thing, in a, in a way. And it's good for developers because it's quick. Yes. Mary, one, one more quick question. I know a few years back we had identified various um, priority sites. Yes. Other than Route 15, now what priority sites haven't been? So um, developed 90 Charlton Road, which is um, on Route 20 in between the Hobsburg Plaza and Technology Park, and um, 51 Technology Park Road. But the propane company was approved to go there. They just hadn't started construction. He had uh, some personal family issues that prevented him from getting started, and they are now in the process of renewing their order of conditions with the Conservation Commission. So that should go forward. But there is some additional land that could be developed at 51 as well. But otherwise, it was the um, 178 Main Street, which w is now the Tractor Supply and Ocean State Job. Um, 660 Main Street, the Sturbridge Business Park was another one. And there's still room available for further development there. 
the 198 um, Charlton Road, which is the Arlen Tool site that just built the new building, was another. And then it was really 90, and then 51 Technology Park. And Route 15, if you remember, was actually oh, denied oh, because of by the, the states. Sewer. They felt lack of capacity and um, transportation issues and infrastructure, as well as some environmentally sensitive features in the corridor. Okay, so it's not even in it? No. Okay, so we'll see you after. Okay. Very good. Thank well, you very thanks. much. Thank, Thank you for you. coming in. Stay warm. Did you do the green community? No. Stay? That's next. Okay. Can I'll you stay. Can you'll stay for that. Okay. That's all right. It should be simple. Okay, next on the agenda, we have a request to authorize the chair of the board to sign the green community's grant application. Jean, you want to just give a quick synopsis of Yes, it? I will. So we were officially designated as a green community, and our designation grant is around $143,000. So I have to have the grant application submitted by 5 p.m. on February 8th, and I am still actively working on that. I have provided you with the listing of the projects that I plan to um, seek approval on with this grant round, and they are all items that came out of our energy reduction plan. So I basically started at the top of the list and worked my way down. There was one item, a uh, rooftop unit for the public safety complex that I've taken out of the equation because the, they have already started the procurement process on that. So I would like, since I have to put some more details together, I'm actually getting um, quotes on the idle right devices. I couldn't have it ready for this evening's meeting, so I would request that you authorize the chair to sign the application when I have it ready, and if, um, if that would work for you, that would be great. Yeah. And I will be s applying for these items that I've given you. Okay, any questions from the board? <coughs> Ted? If everybody else, everybody else okay. Well, I was just asking if they had any okay. questions. Okay, I'll, I'll wait. Oh, no, go ahead. Oh, just um, how, how will this impact your um, requirements for your weatherization and energy reduction? Will this take care of most of it or? Um, no, so this takes care of about a third of the items on our list. Jane, we're supposed to make copies for you. Yeah. However, some of the items after this are um, significant expenditures. So, too, too for example, the next yeah. item in the list Jane, is. I think I have all the copies in the other room. Let me get them and pass them out oh, real quick. Yeah, we haven't seen them. Oh, it's too okay. sorry. We have the complete that's our streets. Fault. That's our fault. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Revised draft. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, I got, I got one. There's two pages. Oh, okay. oh there is. You got, you, got, you got two? I got one. Who has the other one? I have it. Okay, well, oh. Give me that one back. You got to Mary. Hi, Mary. Okay, thank you, Mary. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks. Hope you're going to say Oh, no, we all get two sheets. That's sorry. Wait, Ted, this is the same. Okay, there's two different ones. It actually looks the same. They all look the same. Yeah, and it's got one total, so. Uh, well, sorry about that. I so we killed okay. a tree. Well, okay. good. I All can right. give you one of these, but you probably won't be able to read it because it's just so tiny. But this is the entire list. And I'll put one of those large on the list. You're going to have to Okay. Well, I appreciate the big print though. What are you doing? <laughs> yes, yeah, sweet. So you can see that the next item on the list is on this the tiny list here is Burgess Elementary School LED lighting, and the amount of that project alone is almost two hundred and fifty thousand dollars. So, and then we also have another 
really large project, which, which is the LED street lighting, which is 188,000. And that was um, something I had sent the Board of Selectmen some information about a week or two ago about the program that National Grid is doing, and I think we should seriously investigate that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, there is a webinar coming up. Ted received right. notice of it. And we did that in North, uh, North, Northbridge before we retired, and it was a big savings for the community, so it's definitely worth looking into. Right. So I will, I have it on my calendar, and um, I will log into the webinar. And I, I won't, as soon as I get it, I'll give it to you. As soon as you get the information. Right. As soon as I get it. <laughs> So. Did, did the uh, town take ownership of the uh, street lights, or in uh, we, we, we would take we would take ownership of the street lights? Yeah, correct. Would, would the with the national grid program would would they still own it? I, I don't know what the program is exactly, but <coughs> the one that we did in Northbridge, the town took over ownership took over of the lights. Ownership. I guess there are two ways where one is a correct. bulb replacement, and the other is where the town can uh, purchase the street lights. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think it's more. Of, I think the town saves more in the long run if you do take if you control. And but that that's up in the webinar. I'm sure we'll talk about. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Then is there a motion then to allow the chair of the board to sign the? The only other, the only other thing, if you don't mind, step So moved. The only other thing I just wanted to rub, real quick, I was just telling Gino, I was interested in maybe getting the, e, the town having a UV EV UV. I can't always get. Station in the, in the um, parking lot for um, electric cars. A lot, a lot of communities are doing that. They have a at the town hall. Is that on the list here? It's not. No, I, th it's I think it's, it should already put the list together. But maybe in the future, yeah. there are there are grant. I was just I have been talking to National Grid, and they have grant programs too available for that yeah. to make it pretty inexpensive. So I think um, you know my main goal is to kind of check off the things on the energy reduction plan because which is, we've which committed to, right. right. Yeah. And then, you know, that's definitely something that we could look at in the future. And I think the biggest thing would be finding um, spaces that we can dedicate solely for. Right, because we don't have too we don't many. have too many. The church owns a lot of these spaces here. So, right. yeah. you know, I think that's something yeah. that we'd really have to look at, too. Yeah. Yeah. So, well, you know, some of these things are st still eligible, I think, under Mass Save as yes, well. Yes, they are. So, yes. You know, whatever, mm -hmm. where, whatever pocket the money can come out of, right. we'll go for it. That's Other than right. ours. That's <laughs> <laughs> the last place. Yeah. <laughs> so, Priscilla, you made a motion? Yes, I did. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. What is the average size of a grant? Um, um, so your initial grant is based on your population, and they use a formula. It's a formula grant. And then the other ones after that, I'm not entirely sure. I, I know that sometimes when you see the awards, they're quite substantial, like mm. $300,000, $400,000. <laughs> so I'm hopeful that if we just kind of keep going in this order, you know, next big project would be the Burgess Lights. And so maybe that's a grant in itself because it's so much money. Mm. But once we complete these projects, we will be eligible to keep applying for grant funding in the new rounds so it's a good, it's a good program mm -hmm. okay thank, thank you, you Jean thanks Jean safe travel stay warm okay. Yes. okay let me see I gotta get this okay next on the agenda we have 10 minutes town administrators update yeah, thank you. Uh, first of all, we attended the uh, Mass Municipal Association's conference, annual conference this, this week, this past weekend. I know about, we have four, four board members who also attended, uh, in which we you have an opportunity to go to several workshops on, on, on different, pro, on different um, ideas for communities. Also, it has an opportunity for selectmen to meet with their peers. Um, there's an annual meeting for boards of selectmen, there's also an annual meeting for town managers. Um, which we have, and um, there's also the, the vendor trade vendor trade program, uh, in which we have a number of um, uh, vendors that towns and cities utilize and get ideas for trying to purchase things like perhaps saving money on electricity, such as through a green community. Um, it was out, it's always, it has a number of guest speakers. Um, one of the guest speakers was the uh, governor, who did. Um, talk about a new program for um, the climate change that he's proposing and that um, 
it should be an interesting project, project where it could help out with sto storm drain uh, corrections, the drainage, dams, and then we have a couple of dam issues in Sturbridge. Uh, so there's a, some of those things are, are could be helpful for the community as well as the environment. And the governor uh, mentioned he was going to try to fulfill local aid at the same level as he had done in the past, which is for this year, it, was, it would match the revenues about 2.7% for local aid. That, that's excluding education, which he didn't really have an answer for, as far as I could tell. Um, but he's working, and then I think he'll have that in, in his governor's packet in the package um, next week. I believe he does his message. So um, it was a good event. Uh, it ended Saturday afternoon just as the snow started. So, uh, <laughs> so it was, was good to get out of Boston before it got too bad. Good to get home. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, go ahead, Ted. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Mike, I, I, yeah, I was going to say a, a couple of things. Yeah. One, of the, one of the things the governor mentioned was that there's not going to be any increase, even a 2.7% increase at all. Nothing, no increase in Chapter 90 funding. Right, it was the same, which, same amount as the past year, $200 million, which yeah, will give us the same. Not Unfortunate. Right. We're pushing for 300. Yeah, and right. MMA's uh, re exactly. You're right. Is we'll be pushing for 300, for 300 million. million you're correct. And even that's never enough, as we know. Um, and you know, it, some, something's got to be done there. Right. Um, the other thing is at the MMA, I went to the Worcester County Selectmen's Association meeting, and uh, uh, you know, they they had the. Uh, the staff from MMA come in and go over the legislative uh, stuff. But one thing that, that they brought up is that several months ago when we met in, uh, in Millbury, uh, um, the, the town, uh, the, some of the members at that meeting committed to having a, uh, a meeting here in, in Sturbridge. And the, the chairman wasn't able to contact anybody, so we've never had that meeting here in Sturbridge. Correct. Cause, uh, can I so. just say it was I'm the one who stopped it because that was at the time Leon left. <laughs> oh, so yeah. And we were in a limbo. We had we didn't have Ted. We had just a few like days where we had no one. So I didn't feel that to really represent Sturbridge correctly would have been the right time. And I had emailed the woman who was in charge and said to her that those were my reasons and that was my thought and that they should consider us at a later date when we had a TA and that you know you could bring them and have the TA be part of it and the whole bit so I am the one who's I'm the one who asked them to come and I'm the one who put it on hold for I didn't know about Leon at the time because the meeting I had gone to was like in June it was right before Leon said he was leaving and so I said, you know, why don't you come to Sturbridge? We'd love to have, we have a nice hall, town hall, et cetera. And then the announcement came and I kind of waited it out to see what, when he was leaving. He left like I think the 12th or 13th and this meeting was like the 20th. So the timing wasn't good. So I was hoping that she would reach back, but I never heard back from her. Oh, was so. that Diane Provencher? Yes, the yes. Diane She's Provencher, the one I sent yeah. the email to, yeah. but she never responded and they never touched back, touched base back again. Well, we can get in touch with them again. Yeah, well, um, they asked if we could have it here on April 17th. So there's a request there, so we should get back to them at some point, uh, in, in, you know, maybe at another meeting or now, or whenever. You can even decide right if, now. Yeah. See if, uh, um, but there was a request, because there wasn't too many attended that, uh, so, you know, uh, Worcester it, County it, Selectman's no, meeting. No, there is. So, attended. It, uh, it, it goes up and down. Years yeah. ago, it was a big thing, and then it died out, and then it tried to come back. Yeah. And it, what day of the week is the 17th? The 17th last few is a Wednesday. That I've been to, there, there's been uh, anywhere from 10 to 20 selectmen at, yeah. at those meetings. Yeah. Well, I would be April 17th. The we can just April 17th is Wednesday. Yeah. <laughs> that would be the day after a meeting, probably. No, we have a meeting on the 15th. No, is it not? It's a uh, holiday. Is Patriots it not Day? Patriots Day? It's uh, Monday, Patriots Monday Day. is Patriots Day. Oh, actually, yeah, you would, that'll be the 16th, would it? Yeah, yeah. we meet the 16th. We we'll meet the 16th, I think. If I'm, unless I'm still you do here. it the 22nd, <laughs> unless we. Uh, they got the first though. Yeah, that's their normal meeting date. Is on a Wednesday. The was it the third Wednesday or whatever. Oh, we can. Doesn't matter. Would you, like me to, would you like me to reach out to them, or? Yeah, I mean, there's five Mondays in yeah. April. 
-hmm. This is the Selectmen's Association. Um, 6.30, I think it's 6.30, but... Is this, a, this is Worcester Selectman Association? Worcester County, County. Selectman Association. Is there anything that the uh, community is responsible to take care of besides have its place? They provide $100 yes. for Snacks. pizza, Coke, whatever, you know, soda, pizza. So just your hot, or, you're hosting, we could, hosting the event. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a light lunch at yeah. the end. It's uh, during the time. Okay. Uh, yeah. okay. I mean, normally we'd meet on the 16th. It's any, any way we would want to just... I, I'm fine coming the 16th and 17th, but anyway, we'd want to just try to combine it so that um, instead of having our meeting on Tuesday, we could have our BOS meeting starting if everybody could come at, say, 5, and then we'd go right into the selectmen's meeting. Yeah, well, we can wait till it's closer yeah. to see. Oh, you can yeah. even yeah. have no, our selectmen's meeting the 22nd even. Yeah, I mean. to see what comes up, you know. Yeah. 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 But we'll shoot for the 17th, but, Wednesday. Yeah. If, if we're going to ask them to change their normal meeting date, we, we should get back to them. But we're not asking them to change. No, oh, not yeah. not. We, we, change. we would change ours. We would change our yeah. meeting date yeah. to have it on the same day. That was just my idea, yeah. but I don't think we should ask them to change their. No, I mean, that's set a long time okay. in advance. <laughs> okay, well. Anything else in MMA? Um, no, it was, it was a good time. Yeah. yeah. Mike, you all said too? I yeah. have one, I have one comment about yeah. that. Um, and I know we should ask whoever will be our permanent and uh, town administrator, but um, w a few of us went to the, um, the seminar on, on state money that's a bit available for mass works projects. And I know um, they talked about a small bridges grant, you know, if you needed to redo your bridges and stuff. I think 15 feet or less or 20 feet okay, or less. Okay, and I, and I was wondering, you know, have we, because we have, you know, a few bridges in town that need to be looked at. Mm -hmm. I don't know if they fall in that category. Oh, that's yeah. right. That was it's like a 50 or 15 or 20 feet. Yeah, no longer than uh, 20. It's, it's real okay. small. That was going to be my Unfor question. Unfortunately. Yeah. Do it, our, any of ours qualify? I don't, Does I don't know. I could check. Road? I could check. Okay. Yeah. I could yeah. check. Could, I'm just sure. curious to, mm -hmm. to know that. Sure, I can, I can check in that. Oh, okay. continue, should I continue? Continue, okay. please. Uh, and I also, went, I also attended the MPO meeting, also, uh, Michael Supernight, and I came to that as well, which was, um, I believe it was last week. And um, at the meeting, they update their um, five-year plan each year, and at that meeting, uh, the com communities that submitted requests to go out for year 24, I believe it is, um, had, did their presentations, uh, which were then endorsed by the MPO. This is an area really where hopefully the the next town administrator here and director of public works will look into the MPO for projects. It really is a is a is a place where on the town should try to you know seek funds and perhaps we can keep that as a note for our our meeting when we talk about goals and objectives for yeah, next year. Right. Um, yeah. You know I don't think Sturbridge has had a project in a few years. Maybe Michael, you might know that or not. And it's, it's been it, it quite is, a while. It, the it is the only thing we have on the tip is that federally earmarked project for the trails. Right. So this is something I think the town could try to find too. But anyway, we, we attended that meeting and a uh, number of community, four or five communities did a presentation for what they wish to do projects. And hopefully we can, hopefully town can do that in the future as well. Uh, Betterment committee meeting, uh, I attended that and it was uh, um, to review what all the department heads the various projects each year um, that are eventually recommended to town meeting to go forward and I I know I know the requests are a little higher than the amount of money that was available uh, Barbara Berry um, basically she was there to help us look at the numbers and how it was spent she did, she did a very nice excellent job really of pulling that all together and um, uh, after some discussion on some of the projects that um, a couple of projects um, were withdrawn um, by the department heads to perhaps come back as a capital item or or to be or future years and so that but we were able to balance it so that'll be going forward at town meeting and the last is the uh, attended the um, emergency management training meeting which is at the police department they have that about every two or three months and um, there was a, a tabletop operation which was um, discussing if there was some kind of a chemical spill like an 84 or a turnpike and it was at the same time, you may have a large event like mass um, bicycle 
Yeah. It does. What do you do? How do you how do you move people? And it was it was a very good tabletop exercise and good opportunity to kind of talk out how you try to handle things. And there's representatives from MEPA there to help out. So that, that I think the town your town does a really nice job with this emergency management program. So I just wanted to commend them for the good work they do there. And that's my report. Okay. Any questions on anything there? On on emergency management uh, before. We, uh, Leon left. He, he. I think he asked uh, uh, some of the selectmen whether or not they wanted to take the the emergency management training for a senior senior uh, public official oh. uh, training. And uh, I recently uh, asked uh, asked Kevin that when the Budget. next training. Yeah. Uh, comes up for that to let us know about it sure. because uh, it, that was one of Leon's plans I know I've, I've yeah. taken the the certifications the uh, the 100 and 200 series right. FEMA uh, uh, certificates uh, uh, it's a, you can do them online one but the uh, scene we all have to. We, we? we did. We yeah. have to. Uh, when we did, um, that was a requirement. A, a much at one earlier time. board um, did the. They, the they say which one is required. I think it's right. the one hundred. The one hundred is required is by, by all, all of us. us. Right. And I think we all. I, we, we all did, did it at the yeah. time. Right. Has, but I, has Chase done it? You did it. I don't know. I've, I've, I've done the one hundred. I've only done two hundred and seven hundred. And I have not done all those. And five hundred, which is public works, but. Ted, can you? Ask so that that link gets forwarded to all of us because Chase just got here. Which which and link is the one the link about the link for the 100 about? certification? Because sure, sure. I think we talked about this at one time. When someone gets elected, are they told all these things? Mm -hmm. And and so that way, whoever hasn't done it can do it. Yeah, that that might be a good thing to put in if that's the board's policy that all members take the at least the 100 series. That should be. Yeah. Something that all newly yeah. elected. We're also due for the um, yeah. conflict of interest. Conflict of interest testing. Yeah. Okay. But that's uh, all on mine too. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I did mine last year. Now we have oh. We're mine. not all at the same time. It's an every no. other year Some thing. Of Some of yeah. us are due this year. But we do have to sign the acknowledgement, the acknowledgement regardless that, that we right. got it. Yeah. Right. Okay. Old business, Priscilla. Um, just two things. Well. One of them is like the discussion for the TA next week. Um, do you would you like us to make a chart for each one and just say our pros and cons to them, or how how would would you like to uh, maneuver that next week? Well, we've done things different ways, different times. We did do a chat when we picked a committee, yeah. right? Um, but normally. Normally, it's just been discussion we've done, and then a motion for somebody one or none or <laughs> all of the above. Yeah, right. You okay. know, so um, I don't know. Is discussion okay with you? Oh, um, it is. Yeah. I, I didn't know how, if you wanted. I mean, because I was doing it anyway. The pros and cons on each of them. Yeah. No. That's, and then, I, uh, I do that for my own benefit. Me too. Yeah. I'm the only one too. that can read it because it's, <laughs> it's not my best uh, penmanship. So, you know, we'll have just general discussion. Are we going to do, like, one at a time? Or are we going to, like, when it's our turn? Yeah. Just, yeah, just cu I'm just curious. It yeah. doesn't matter how you yeah, do no, it, Yeah, no, it's really. like bouncing the ball around, you know. Yeah. I like this. I didn't like this. You know, yeah. this, you know. Okay. Well, we come with our ideas to the retreat or before. No, 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 this what is for TA. About? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were talking about our, forget yeah. it. And 28th. You're, you're, you're a little ahead. I thought you were talking about something <laughs> entirely different. Yeah. No, <laughs> this is the TA voting the next yes. week. TA yeah, discussion was my question. Yeah. For discussion, mm -hmm. um, and I know this is not new, but it isn't new. It is new, and it isn't new. The joint meeting that we have with FinCom every year. Do we have any idea? Would that be in March? That's usually March. Okay. Yeah, Barbara usually picks coordinates that with the FinCom. Picks a date. Picks a date. <laughs> so Thanks. That's it. But that's it. Okay. Mike? No, I don't have any. Mary? No. And I have none. New Priscilla? No. Mike? No. Mary? No. And I have none. 
the correspondence, Mary? Course, uh, correspondence dated January 7th from the DEP, a waterways license application for 272 Big Allum Road. January 7th from Sovereign Consulting Inc. Immediate Response Action Completion Report and Phase 4 Remedy Implementation Plan. January 7th, Charter Communications, Upcoming Changes to the Channel Launch in HD. January 7th, Charter Communications, Upcoming Change Notification, Expiration of tri Tribune broadca Broadcasting Channels. January 7th from the MMA, Setting Forth the Annual Business Meeting Agenda. January 14th from the DEP, a sanitary survey report. January 14th from Jewel Environmental Corp, a permanent solution statement for Interstate 90. January 16th from Charter, agreement with Tribune broadcasting notification. And January 18th from the DEP, total coliform sampling plan, plan approval. Okay, any questions or comments on anything? Any other? Communications. Okay, we do have minutes. Just, just I passed oh. on the uh, DEP uh, notice to our um, Shane Moody, who is going to prepare a response and have something ready for it, probably in his next report. Oh, okay. On that. He, I, he did touch on it at his last report. That was right. it's always going to come up. I just wanted to let the board know that. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so we have the minutes of January 7th. Any? Corrections, Which, comments? Okay, this is the open meeting one. Oh, yeah. Um, I've, got, I've got some notes here that I'd, I I think I should give to Janae. Uh, when, um, just so it makes sense, uh, when, after we return uh, to uh, open session, uh, from from executive session, Probably, uh, I wasn't here when we first, I wasn't present, so uh, I okay. would just like to. What page are you on? One. Page one. Okay, we, we went into, oh, exec yeah, it, we it shows that we went okay. into ex executive yeah. session and we returned to open session at 6.30 p.m. Right. And then uh, I, I just would think, I, I would like to note that I uh, had entered the meeting uh, during executive session, so or something like, something to that effect, because uh, all of a sudden I'm making motions and or seconding motions, and I wasn't even present to start out with. So, okay, do you know when you uh, arrived? Yeah, it's in the executive session. Uh, Minutes uh, it, it, at 5:53. So, so okay, M. So. Supina entered uh, the meeting at 5:53 during executive session. Is that what you want to add? Yeah. Okay. Just just so the so it makes sense that I was sure. Can I? Yeah. Then that would come just before selectmen. Let yeah. The Pledge of Allegiance. Yeah. Just before the selectmen pledge of allegiance. Okay. And because um, it just above that it says I was absent. Right. <laughs> yeah, and also. Um, oh, I'm looking for Janae. You're not going to find her. <laughs> I'm the closest you got. You're the closest. I will um, give this to Janae in the morning. No. I was. I may ask you to talk I'll, to I'll, Janae I'll, afterwards, but quite. Yeah, I'll give it to you. Into, I was present for the executive session. On the seventh. Yes. Um, yes. In fact, I made the motion to go into executive session. Yeah. So I think she must have just been cutting and pasting because she said M. Dowling entered the meeting at 6.32 p.m. Yeah, I was going to say when we got to there, uh, so that M. Dowling had left the meeting during executive session at, and if you want the time, I can give you the time. 6.32. No, I think I went, probably went to the bathroom. No. I was present at, at 6.14 p.m. You left okay. uh, executive oh, session. Oh, okay. So, so you could, we could say uh, M. Dallin had left uh, the meeting during executive session at 6.14 p.m. and re-entered the meeting at 6.32 p.m. That sounds great. Because uh, the, the way it's drafted right now, it looks like I just okay. got to the meeting at 6.30. 6.30. So you came back at 6.32? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. If that's I don't I don't the recall executive exactly. session or the regular meeting. This is um, the regular meeting. Yeah, I think it would be the regular. I don't, I don't know if you came back to the executive session, did you? I don't. I don't no, she no, didn't. But she what left? I'm saying is, if you if you read the um, right. roll call, the roll call, if you, it, it's not making sense right now because at 5:30 I was present. Um, I made the motion to go into executive right, session, right. and I was present for a good part of the discussion. Correct, correct. And then at the bottom here it says, "M. Dowling into the meeting at 6:32." Yeah. Which was the open session, so I would just. Right, but it, it, yeah, so but I was already. I, I, here, I understand. So I understand. Just give I, the I, time I, that I was asked. I, I understand. Thank you. Yeah. So I got it here for her. All right, you just share it with Ted. Okay. Hey, anything else? Um. Yeah. Uh, the. Um, on page three. The second to last paragraph there. I. I think it should say M. Supernat brought up that the DLTA grant application and the um, and the uh, complete streets program was on the agenda for the meeting the next day, the planning board meeting the next day. So it would read, M. Supernat brought up that the DLTA grant application and the Complete Streets program was on the agenda for the planning board meeting the next day. I just want, I, I remember pointing that out, you know, just stating that, that if people wanted more information about either, either of those things, they could attend or watch the planning board meeting. Sorry. And that's it. That's all I got. Um, could you, um, um, Ted, on the um, executive session and on the um, open session, I don't care how it's worded, but could you say that um, on the executive, M. Dowling left the room at 6.14 p.m. to attend the search committee sure. meeting occurring simultaneously? Mm -hmm. And then on the public, uh, on the open one, M. Dowling re-entered the meeting at 6.32 p.m., you know, following the search committee's meeting. Because right now it just looks like, you know, I left for 20 right minutes and hung out as opposed to attended another meeting. Yeah. Okay, then is there a motion to approve as amended? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any more discussion? All in favor? I'm, so, I'm sorry, who, who made the motion? I did. Priscilla. Priscilla, Priscilla did, and, and I seconded second. it. Okay. I'll take it. I'll show writing the notes from Mary when she came oh, in thank left. Thank you. Okay. Okay, then we have the uh, January 14th minutes. We do? Yeah. Well, it's in your mailbox. She they also, emailed and then it's in the box. She also sent it out. It's just a two oh. page. No, it's in the mailbox now, but she, oh, she oh, emailed it earlier. Right, I took it. Just got that from, oops, Russ Chamberlain. <laughs> Have you read about that? No, I, I didn't have it. Did you, Mike? Hmm? Do you have it? Yeah. yeah somebody, right here. Oh, I didn't. somebody had a laser that they. Oh, I heard about the laser. It was shining yeah, yeah, on yeah, Brady's yeah. face. Yeah, on Brady's face. Yeah. yeah. I heard about that. Right? That part, that I heard. Yeah. I didn't give it to me. I don't have it. But I'll, I can look at somebody's phone.
Excellent. On page uh, page one of there, uh, um, after the the first two motions and votes, the, it says Mary entered in, at four four forty one p.m. Which Mary? A Dowling. D. Yeah, it should say. M. Darling entered the meeting. This is on the 14th? Yes. Yeah. Anything else? I'm to get time and a half, you know, because I have to do two, two positions tonight. <laughs> Mine plus hers. I thought you meant because we but take your time. Taking too long. <laughs> if they paid us, we'd be getting time and a half too. Yeah. Yeah. You get triple time. Yeah. yeah. I'll put, well, everybody catch I think you should get paid. <laughs> I'll put money well, in the we budget. We tried that one year. That didn't work. I, I, well. I'm recommending money in the budget for you. <laughs> you guys deserve it. You do a lot of work. Most places get it. Yeah. Yes, most I places agree. get something. I make a motion to accept them as amended. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay. Then we do have the executive, but we'll do those in the executive session. Okay, and there are no citizens here, so no questions. Um, there's a motion to go into executive session. Mary? Yes. So, well, somebody's got to second it. Uh, did Mary right, second I just, it? No, oh, I, I, have to, it? I have to read it. You have to read it. I'll make a motion um, pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 30A, Section 21A3, to discuss police and fire negotiation, negotiations, where the chair of the Board of Selectmen declares that discussion in open session would have a detrimental effect on the position of the town and the approval of minutes. So and not to... So oh. declared. Okay, and should I say not, not to reconvene? To. Not to reconvene an open session. So moved. Second. Okay. Yes. Priscilla. Yes. Mike. Yes. Mary. Yes. And I'm yes. Okay. No. Oh. Seems so Second. quiet around here. 